I know, it's more paper. So I, I love paper, that's what I love. That's one of my favorite things about art is paper. So I'm doing another one for the heavyweight, the 300 pound. This is what I use sometimes, not all the time. I like that fluid, but I do use the Stonehenge Aqua and I'll tell you why. Number one, it's heavyweight paper. Number two, it's good paper. And number three, it's cheaper paper. So the nine by 12 block, I saw for $31.21, that's $1.56 a sheet. Once you cut it in half and now you have it double up, that's what I use anyway. So I use the, the uh, nine by six, that's the size I cut it into, and that's how I use it. Now, if you wanna use the full one, that's fine. But since I do that, I can cut that price in half, $1.56 a sheet, much cheaper than the other two that I just looked at. Instead of ruining a whole sheet of this stuff like I did in the last video and with the other one, the Hanna Mule that I did before, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a little piece. Because I cut this, I actually cut this into an eight by eight because I wanted to compare it to the Fluid 100 and that was an eight by eight. So I cut it into an eight by eight. So I used that extra little piece to put some tape on, put some masking fluid on and see what the results were. I'll show you that here in a second. All right, let's get into it. All right, so as you can see here, I use the tape that I put on, kind of completely cockeyed, that's fine. And then I put on the masking fluid, and here's my theory, it could be. The masking fluid did not work very well. The tape was okay, a little bit came up, but it, again, it was not a big deal. And I'm using painter's tape, and you can use other tape. Matter of fact, I'm gonna get some other tape to use, but basically, what I'm doing here is, uh, I'm, I think because I put a fan on it, that the top layer of masking fluid, the surface of it, kind of dries first before the underside of it uh, dries. And as the underside dries, it kind of pulls the paper a little bit. That's my theory, I have no idea. But again, the masking fluid did not, I've always used a, a fan or something to dry it though, so I have no idea why it's not working now. But for some reason, even on this paper, it tore it, it did not work out very well and you'll see as I put on a couple layers that it just looks like garbage afterwards so definitely no masking fluid on this paper either unless I can, I can also get a different masking fluid I can do that I need to order that and try that but I think that might help as well now as far as I'm concerned this paper holds up wonderfully I've used it many times before and any kind of wash you put on it, it holds. You can go over it multiple times. You can put layers on. It works great. And one of the things that I also want to mention is I love doing these particular types of drawings, these particular types of abstracts, because at first, and this is what I enjoy about it, at first it looks like absolute garbage. It looks like trash. It looks like you should throw it in the garbage before you go any further. And then when you add the ink and you add the detail, all of a sudden, it just looks so much nicer. It just all the, just all the texture comes out and you can start to see it. And that's what I really like and enjoy about this kind of art. Now, if for some reason you don't like this type of art, just let me know because I'm gonna keep making this kind of art unless someone says something and I may still keep making art if even if someone does say something because I really enjoy these pieces. And like I said, I, I think I, the thing that I enjoy the most is that in the beginning, it looks like trash, it looks like garbage. And then you put the detail in and all of a sudden the whole piece makes sense. It starts to develop and you see the shapes of it and you see, oh, maybe that's something. It's just, I love doing it. And sometimes if you use granulating pigments, that helps too, because you start to see texture before you ever go anywhere near it with the ink. And sometimes just putting in some extra layers will do the same thing, but I just absolutely love this kind of art. Now some people, and sometimes I do when I do just the drawing, but some people when they create art, they focus on one little section and they get it looking finished and then they move to the next section and make that look finished. I've seen that a lot with colored pencil artists. They just work on a little section, like the first, I mean, it's like a two inch little circle and they work on that until it looks perfect. That's how it's gonna look at the end. Then they move next to it and go to the next one. I was never able to do that except for just regular abstract drawing. The reason is because when I do that, I 
I get almost a little bit of anxiety because I don't know if I'm going to be able to make the piece that looks next to it look the same as it. So I, it just, I'd rather just put down the washes all at once and then work the details all at once and do that kind of stuff. That's just me though. That's how I like to work. Let me know how you like to work. Let me know in the comments below. So speaking of things that you may not like, there are some art channels that I subscribe to that I cannot stand. Now I know that sounds a little weird, but that's how I keep coming up with stuff to talk about. I never thought that I'd ever have more to say than like 10 videos. I thought I'd be done. That's it. I'm over and, and that's the end of the channel. But thanks to these morons, I have new things to say every week or sometimes things to repeat as I hear the same nonsense spewed out of the mouths every single week. So let me give you an example. Like how about an artist who starts talking dramatically about something that you absolutely cannot relate to because their issues, we, we dream of having their issues. They try to explain it so dramatically, you feel for them, but in reality, you would love to have that problem. Let me give you a, a specific example. So, that reminds me of a time as a very specific person who I know who complains every time I talk to them about how hard it is to keep up with all their homes, their multiple homes, and then their commercial buildings, and their yacht, and their warehouse full of cars, and. It's hard to feel sorry for someone who's complaining about that kind of stuff. I wish I could complain about that stuff. I'd be a lot more relaxed if those were the things that I had to complain about. If I was like, oh, I just, I hate that I just have to fix another door on a house that I own somewhere on a lake or at the beach or whatever. And there's people who complain about those things and they think that you're going to be sympathetic with them. But in reality, you're thinking, how can you be complaining about something like that when I don't have those things? And I'm not trying to say that I should have them and you shouldn't. That's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is I'm not going to relate to any of your problems because I would love to have your problems. Here's what I'd like to do. How about we switch bank accounts and I'll take you those problems and you can have the problems that I have with my bank account. If we're, that's what we're talking about. If we're complaining about how much money you have, I would love to have that conversation with you and I would like to switch and then I'll say this, those things to you and see how you feel about it. Now there are plenty of problems to have outside of money issues and I'm not saying that I wanna trade problems with anyone else in the world with any of their other problems. I'm just talking about the people who always complain about the amount of money they have when they're rich, they're millionaires, they have tons of money, and they're complaining about it. And if I have to be honest, it has nothing to do with the money itself, actually. It has to do with the freedom that comes along with that. It has to do with the amount of time that you gain when you have that kind of money then. The kind of time that you can then do the things you love to do and stop complaining about all those other things. But there are artists that do it too. They, they, these are artists that make a living making YouTube videos and selling their art. I mean, it's the dream for an artist to be able to just sell your art and live off of that. And they're doing that. And then they, they make some stupid video about how, oh, I, I just I didn't feel like getting out of bed this morning because, you know, my life is, I'm not doing so much with my life. And they do. Now, I'm not talking about people that are clinically, have clinical issues. They're depressed or whatever. Now, I'm talking about, what I'm talking about is people who don't understand what they have. They fought for something, they attained it, and now they're bored with it. So that's what they're that's what they're actually complaining about. I would love to have those problems. I would love to to wake up in the morning and say, "Oh, I have to create more art today." That would be my dream. I would love to do that, and I could do that forever. I would never complain about that, and I know that I would never complain about it. Here's what I'm saying. Those people that think that they're making videos to connect with their audience are isolating their audience because their audience is thinking, I wish I had a problem like that because now I have to go into work and face a boss who I can't stand or a coworker that I can't stand or I was supposed to go to little Timmy's softball game and I couldn't do that because I had to go to this job and 
I had to wake up early so I couldn't go out with my friends and do something I wanted to do because I had a big thing in the morning, a big presentation in the morning. I had to go right to sleep. Do you understand what I'm saying is the problems that people are complaining about, they're not relatable. They have they have lost touch with reality. And that's what you see in any anytime someone really makes it and they no longer have to worry about the money aspect of it. It doesn't solve every problem. It just solves the money problem. That's the problem. It solves the money aspect of, of the problems. And that's you can't relate to it unless you can relate to it. And that's just how it is. So if you're an artist who makes a living being an artist, don't complain to other people that that's what you do all day. And that's like a complaint for you. I'll tell you what, you don't have to do it. Put down your art and go get a nine to five job like everybody else or worse, get a second or third shift job, which I can't stand myself, but go do one of those and then let's see how you feel about that. Then let someone else complain to you about how they have too much time on their hands. They, they just, I don't know what to do because I create art, I sell it, I make a living and I don't have anything else to do with my time. That was not even what I wanted to mention. That's not what I was trying to bring up here. I don't know, I got carried away a little bit. So anyway, what I would actually like to know is, I'm, I, there's some channels, like I said, channels I watch that I can't stand, and they give me some material. But it, I'm starting to look at all the channels that I used to follow, the good channels, and they're mostly the ones that I used to watch, are they're no longer around. They don't produce videos anymore. The people that I used to love watching to produce videos never do it or very, very rarely do. They maybe post a video every six months or something like that. So I'm running out of good content to watch art-wise anyway. So I need more people. And there's some new people who have come on the scene and I enjoy watching all your videos, but some I, I need more. So what I'd like to know down in the comments, please, Give me some more people that you watch. Give me, Just list some channels that you like to watch so I can go tear them apart. I mean, so I can go watch them, enjoy them as well, and not tear them apart and kind of make fun of what they're saying. So just what I'd like to know is which channels of art do you watch? Which ones do you get the most out of? Which ones do you think have some good advice so that I can listen to it as well. That's what I'd like to know. And if there's something that you would like me to create, a video that you would like me to try out, or like an art supply you want me to try, or if there's a type of drawing you want me to attempt, I would like to try those things. So I would like to hear your input so that we can build a channel that we all like. And if someone says, well, I'd really like to see more of this kind of drawing, or I've always wondered about this kind of thing, I would like to know that. I would like to maybe give it a shot and try it out for you so I could show you that you don't want to do it anyway. No, that's not true. There's some things that I'm sure some of you will want to do that I may find interesting as well. And it may be something that I start doing all the time. I may love it. So I would love to hear some feedback from you. So thumbs up the video if you want to see me do some stupid art challenge thing and that's going to be your suggestion. Like, oh, create a piece of art with dollar store art supplies or some stupid thing like that. Which I will probably do anyway because it sounds like a pretty fun video. So just let me know if whatever it is you want me to give it a shot and that's what I want to do. If you would like to join our community, go to illustrationsbypete.com. You can come in, you can put your own artwork on the site and promote it. You can find some inspiration in the free reference photos. You can just use them however you want in your artwork. You do not need to credit me. Or you can come into the forums and talk to some people and maybe give some advice and maybe find a little bit of information that helps you. So come check us out. All right, that's about it for me. I'm going to go. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.